Aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? <laughs> What's up, nerds, and welcome to another episode of the Multiverse Report. We are recapping the week's nerdy news from the forest moon of Endor to Sunnydale, California, and everywhere in between. My name is Mike Gibson. With me, as always, is Steve Haller. What's up, Steve? Well, my son is obsessed with listening to the Ewok celebration, also known as Yub Nub, uh, repeatedly. Good for so, him. Good for um, him. yeah, so that's what's up recently. It's Imperial March and Ewok celebration repeatedly every time we get in the car. My son and I just tonight finished watching Return of the Jedi for, I believe it's the third time he has seen it. Oh, nice. Um, and I did. Uh, feel a little uh, nostalgic, a little sad that he does not know the joy of the Yub Nub because he's only seen the... Uh, oh, yeah. The, Special the editions, version. you don't get that. Mm. You don't get the Yub Nub, which is one of my least favorite things about the special edition because I know we have you know, friend of the podcast, former guest of the podcast, Matt Peseta, Star Wars lover, prefers the new uh, outro music to Yub Nub. I do not. I was going to say, I think we can attest he's wrong on that. I think he's wrong. I would much <laughs> rather have the Yub Nub because it's what they're, it's the music that they're actually playing. Like the Ewoks are making that yeah. music. And yep. now all the drums and the stuff that doesn't line up. Oh, no. The music, it's confusing. It's and like also in the new one, you don't have that wonderful little run of a da ba da ba da. Like <laughs> exactly. the Ewoks literally say that at one point. That makes yeah. it great. Why not? Do you know that um, there's an English translation for Yub Nub? Is there? Listen to that ep- that <laughs> no, episode that's of, great. Uh, the soundtrack show, <laughs> or whatever that guy did. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot there's about a, that. Yeah. English version and Yub Nub, the lyrics to Yub Nub are uh, freedom. We want freedom. And now that we can be free, it's time to celebrate, is what they're yep. saying. Now that we can be free, it's time to celebrate freedom. We want huh. freedom. Yeah. Well, then. So there's a little uh, Star Wars trivia for you all out there. Thanks for tuning in. Is that what you wanted? You want us to dissect Yub Nub for you in oh. this episode? Well, if you want someone to dissect Yub Nub, go check out uh, David W. Collins' soundtrack show because soundtrack that's show. phenomenal. It's like four episodes on Return of the Jedi or something. Oh, yeah. Episode. Well, there's there's yeah. also, he did Star Wars Oxygen, which was its own animal yeah. that was like 30 that. episodes long, but you can't find it anywhere now. Mm-hmm. So that's it's lost to the annals of the internets. Yeah. That's a bummer. Um, all right. We a uh, bit of a light week for news. We do have a few stories to uh, dive into a um, couple a uh, bit of business up top here. Um, if you're just listening to your weekly nerdy news recap, um, if this is the only thing you've seen in your feed, you should check your feed for a recap of the first episode of She-Hulk, which we just finished, and an immediate reaction to the first episode of House of the Dragon. We recorded all three of these episodes in one night so hopefully get to bed at a de- semi-decent hour tonight but um we'll yeah, get to we bed at an hour at an hour exactly um but we uh watched house of the dragon and immediately started recording our thoughts on it and then we did our she hulk recap and then we this episode that you're listening to right now so uh we don't know for sure that we're going to keep doing weekly recaps of those two shows if you want them tell us and maybe we'll figure out a way to do it it's hard to do house of the dragon when it's on the same time as we normally record on sunday nights but you know if we have to make an exception to please all of our millions of fans then we will um other one thing that i wanted to shout out a bit of a plug for myself that uh it was announced this week that um i can't remember if i've mentioned this on the podcast or not but uh i have a story I have written a a, a six-page comic story in an upcoming horror anthology that is going going to be released by Band of Bards Publishing uh, in the comics publisher out of Buffalo. And uh, since I wrote it, since it's been submitted, since it's been accepted by Band of Bards, Band of Bards has gained distribution through Diamond uh, Distributions, which is the big distributor of most uh, comic books in the United States of America. So that's a big deal. So this book that I'm a part of is going to be available in stores November. uh, Coming this, I think it was November 16th, I believe is the date. And it's available in previews right now. You can order it by going to your local comic book shop 
and asking them to order it for you. The uh, pre-order code is SEP for September, SEP221423. I guess that's how uh, previews work. You got to give them a code or they can just probably look it up in their system or whatever. But anyway, if you want to read a six-page horror story by me, uh, written by me and illustrated by the great Riley McFarlane, um, you should go to your local comic book store and ask them to order this book. So please do that because uh, I'm very excited about being an actual published comic book author, not a self-published one, but an actually published one. So uh, you should go and do that at your local comic book store if you're listening to this. Sure. Ask for uh, The name of the anthology is From the Static. So look for From the Static Horror Anthology from Band of Bards. It's supposed to come out in November, available in previews right now. I was going to say, are you going to actually say the name of the thing? But you yeah, did. Yeah, thank you. So, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and the name of our story is called Post Traumatic Credit Scene. And it's about, um, uh, you know, like if a movie like Halloween happened in real life and the killer was dead at the end of it, what would what would the final girl, what, what would her the rest of her life be like? It would not it would not be great, most likely dealing with the trauma of being attacked by a ruthless murderer. Um, so check that out. If yeah. you're into that kind of stuff. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I think uh, our, our little mic's all growing up here. Uh, <laughs> getting right. diamond distribution. Yeah. Um, I'm very excited about it. It's really so awesome. So, yeah. No, that should be good. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. So, check gonna, that out. Going to have to run down to, uh, uh, I wanted to say Cloud City, but that's years gone by. Yeah. Uh, Funky Town. Funky Town. Um, you take me to Funky Town comics. Oh, or where else? I, Play the now game I can't forget Syracuse. that. You can go to Funky Town Comics. You can go to Play the Game, Read the Story. You can go to Comic Zone out in North Syracuse. Any of your local comic book stores should be able to order this anthology for you. So do it, please. That would be great if you would like to read it. That's Absolutely. So we're going to dive into some news. Breaking, breaking news. We just checked this on our social medias right before we started recording this, and they have released some footage from the long-awaited HBO uh, adaptation of The Last of Us. The Last of Us being a very popular and well-received uh highly acclaimed video game about uh zombies more or less yeah. um a natural like a spore fungus that causes uh zombification and uh two survivors one of them played by pedro pascal the mandalorian himself and uh the other played by bella ramsey uh liana was that her name liana mormont yep, Le- liana mormont yep yeah so, um, so Joel and Ellie are the two the two main characters from Last of Us, and yeah. uh, as you can imagine, Pedro plays Joel, uh, Leon, or well, yeah. yeah, Liana. Bella Ramsey plays. Um, why is my brain just blank? Uh, Ellie. Ellie. There Ellie. we go. Yeah, <laughs> like, I literally just said yeah. this. Um, yeah. It's been a long time since I played that game. It was a phenomenal game, and it is. I've never played the second one. I need to. Same. I'll, although I've I haven't because. Here's why I haven't played the second one. Because the first one was horrifying. Yes. <laughs> and uh, although, also, I will say the first one, probably the best scripted game I've ever played in my entire life. Yeah. Um, I really loved those characters with my whole heart. Um, and it was hard to see them go through some certain stuff that you... That's yeah. like the kind of, it's the kind of game that makes you make terrible choices about the characters that you are attached to. And I've heard that the second one really, really pushes that a little bit. Oh, wow. Um, and that's why I haven't played the second <laughs> one, because I don't know that I want to put myself through that. Um, but the, I mean, the game, you could probably adapt just the cutscenes of the game itself and have that be an incredible show. And I'm sure that's not exactly what they're doing. I'm sure they're, you know, adapting it in the, the ways that they see fit, but... Right, and you could, you know, you could do that with another another game we're going to talk about later as well. But um, mm-hmm. this was kind of the one of the the first and, like you said, the best scripted games I've ever remotely yeah. played. That yeah, it was incredible. I, I mean, as soon as they did, you, when you were playing it, you felt like you were playing through a movie or series. Yes. Yes. Yep. So I'm very excited about this. The teaser is very short. It was part of like a, you know, what's highlight reel. Up highlight reel for hbo shows coming up um but we did get a little bit of dialogue between ellie and joel um some good drama from pedro pascal a lot of him running carrying her (laughs) over his back which happens a lot in the game you know because they're 
escaping hordes of zombies constantly. So, um, I mean, if this series goes, uh, you know, the, I guess the question is, now that The Walking Dead has come and gone as one of the biggest zombie things ever, do people still want to watch a zombie show? Uh, will they still care about it? Are people zombied out? I think is the big question about The Last of Us. I almost wonder because um, because Walking Dead dragged on so much, and I'm pretty sure everybody thought that it ended about five or six years ago, yeah. that we should be in an okay place for this at this point. Because I'm not going to okay. lie, until uh, I want to say like maybe uh, half a year ago, I didn't realize The Walking Dead was still ongoing. Yeah, so, I think it ended. I think it jumped the shark about five years ago, and it's just kind of kept going. I, I I know I ditched Walking Dead um, a few seasons ago, although I heard that it I heard that it got better or got stayed better, you know, stayed oh. great, whatever you want to say. After yeah. people, you know, I feel like they were probably like, okay, people are sick of this. We have to keep this good, <laughs> and they yeah. did. I guess from what I, from what I heard, but I was just I was out. I was just so sick of. It just seemed like a lot of wheel spinning, so I right. jumped a few years ago. Um, and I mean, the difference, I guess, between oh, one of the differences, because The Last of Us really focuses just on those two characters and their dynamic together, Joel and Ellie. Um, and also the virus being, uh, the zombification being like plant-based or fungal-based. Right. Uh, it doesn't just make zombies. It makes all all kinds of monsters. So that's a difference um, for sure. And it's, it's really because it's, it's not even technically zombies. It's just weird fungus monsters that look and act like zombies. They're not slow. They're not stumbling. They're fast and terrifying. <laughs> so um, so we'll, well see what that's like. I don't even know when that's coming out. I think probably next year or sometime. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it said coming next year in one of the articles. Yeah. So um, speaking of fast and terrifying. Ah, great segue. The biggest uh, biggest news this week was really the biggest lo- news last week. And like right I, before we recorded and had a beautiful if, rant about this. If I had only checked uh, my news, checked the news feed one more time before we recorded this episode, yeah. we would have been talking about this last week. So this is like a very old story. It's a week old story. Um, and to, you know, to pour salt in the wound... It's on a topic that we did talk about last week. Yeah. We could have had some some closure on maybe. Uh, we're diving into Flash Watch. Last week we talked about how Warner Brothers was uh, dealing with three options for uh, uh, the release of the Flash. Option one was Ezra Miller decides to seek treatment for their uh, you know mental health issues, and they were you know the Ezra does minimal press appearances gives like a big apology kind of interview or whatever explains themselves and does a little bit of press for the movie and they release the movie and they hope for the best option two was Ezra Miller refuses treatment um just stays hidden and they don't do any press for the movie and they still release the movie anyway option three is canceling the movie altogether if Ezra Miller doesn't comply or starts making things worse that's what we talked about last week uh, but again, if we had uh, checked the news, we would know that Ezra Miller officially is seeking treatment for, quote unquote, complex mental health issues. So somewhere David Zaslav is just doing backflips of joy, um, knowing that this has happened. Uh, there's a statement from Ezra Miller this week saying or last week <laughs> saying, Having recently gone through a time of intense crisis, I now understand that I am suffering complex mental health issues and have begun ongoing treatment. I want to apologize to everyone that I have alarmed and upset with my past behavior. I am committed to doing the necessary work to get back to a healthy, safe, and productive stage in my life. So, I mean, that's all well and good. Seems like it could have been written by a PR firm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) But uh, what else do you expect for a situation like this? Um they're probably if it didn't sound like it was being written by a PR firm then we would have to go back to questioning more decisions yeah yeah you're right yeah um so this obviously is the best option for Warner Brothers and hopefully it works out hopefully they do get into some treatment and they are okay enough to promote the movie in some way by next summer and 
hopefully it all works out. There are some pending uh, legal issues, though, I believe. I think that the stuff in Hawaii, from what I read, I think the stuff in Hawaii has been settled out of court financially, monetarily, I should say. Um, but there is still, he does still have to appear at the end of September for an arraignment for the most recent arrest. And there's also allegations of him, you know, grooming underage kids. Yeah. Uh, things like that. So that's not great. So we will see how much of that sticks, how much of that is addressed, and um, how much of that they can answer for. Now, this turns uh, into one of those charts that it's like, uh, you know, uh, Ezra Miller enters therapy. Um, or treatment, uh, yes or no, yes, okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> does uh, treatment go well, yes or no? And it just kind of keeps circling back yeah, to okay. each of the Warner Brothers Close options chart. we talked about. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, flowchart was the word uh, I was talking, you're thinking of. Yeah, yeah good. I thanks. Got you. I got you, bud. <laughs> um, Steve, so for you, does this make any difference in your opinion of Ezra Miller or your desire to see The Flash or any of that kind of stuff? No. 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 Okay. It's, I mean, it's the same thing. Like, yeah, if, if legit, like, I, for Ezra Miller's sake, I hope that they yeah. actually get treatment and this works out. But it's like this, the, the whole thing's just so tumultuous. Like, yes, if it works out, I'll go and see The Flash, hands down, no problem. No matter what, I'm probably going to see The Flash. We've been but, talking about it for so long. <laughs> right. At, at this point, you have to. But yeah. um, but it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm not... It, it doesn't really... Because we've been talking about it so much, I don't know if this moves the needle or does any different than you know where we were a week ago. Yeah, I mean... Um... Yeah, I agree. Well, and I guess I guess that's how you got to couch it is, you and I or John Q. Public, right? Yeah, because because somebody who doesn't like just saw oh Ezra Miller's in trouble oh they're seeking help okay sure we'll still go see the movie. There's so many people that don't even know who Ezra Miller is. True, people are just gonna say oh they made a Flash movie I'm gonna go see that without knowing anything about it you know so that. You know, well, and then, the like, my right. father will do that and then wonder why it isn't uh, Grant Gustin. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, because yeah. he actually watched the, the CW Flash, which boggles my mind because I haven't even seen the CW Flash. Wow, but, yeah. yeah, he's he would be one of those people that's like, who's this other Flash? What's going on? Yeah. Why am I more confused? Yeah, so, um, I mean, we'll see the results of this. Uh, if it works and they can do promotion for the movie great if it doesn't you know i i I read a report that said that either you know people on miller's team or people from warner brothers had reached out and tried to get them into some kind of treatment over the last however many months like you know you would think that that would be obvious we've talked about that many times like how is someone somebody is trying to get something to happen here um and apparently they were and now that the, the the rumor is that because they floated the idea of completely canceling the movie, that's what did it for them to be like, okay, fine. Because, you know, who knows what their deal is. They could be getting, you know, if the movie doesn't come out, they might miss out on, you know, points on the back end or whatever, you know, like, you know, right. industry deal talk. Like they want to make some money and they're not going to make it if they don't make that movie. And we know David Zaslav's totally fine with canceling movies, whether they're done or not. Um, yep. Also, uh, while we're talking about that, let's touch on this real quick. Uh, did you read that HBO Max removed tons of like uh, kids programming over yeah. the last week? Because they didn't want to pay the residuals? Including over 200 episodes of Sesame Street. Yeah. Insane. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, It's for the children, those... man. It's for the children. Like, are those residuals worth more than the terrible PR that you are getting from doing all of this? Like right. for for tomorrow. jacking up Sesame Street. And I saw I saw someone. I wish I could remember who it was. Uh, a tweet that I thought was perfectly said, and you will probably relate to this. I certainly can. This person on Twitter said, "The streamers with the best kids stuff are the ones that I keep." Because, yeah. like, I'll, oh, yeah. I'll get a free trial of Apple TV if I want to watch a show or something. Right. But I'm not getting rid of 
Netflix because my son, lo- as much as I barely watch Netflix, my son watches a ton of stuff on Netflix because mm-hmm. it has great kids programming. Up until this past week, the two of the shows that were canceled from HBO Max, my son really likes a lot. Yeah. There was a show called Odo about a little owl and a show, uh, Elmo had like a fake talk show called right. uh, not, The Not Too Late Show. My son loved that as well. Now, he can't watch those ever because they don't exist in physical form. They're just gone. They're just deleted from history. And, unreal. Uh, it's unreal. It's unreal. Right. So, well, that's I'm like you said, like Apple TV, if it's not Ted Lasso season, I'm probably not subscribed. Sure. Or Severance or something. That, uh, right. Is, is Severance the one that's on Apple TV? I think TV so. Love, the sci-fi one? Yeah. Or for um, all, is yeah, it that Severance. or For All Mankind or one of those? Yeah, um, no, it's Severance is the one I was thinking. I couldn't. It was Severance or Succession. I wasn't sure which mm. S word to go. Succession's on HBO. But yeah, like I'll I'll subscribe for a month, binge whatever I need to, call it a day. Yeah. But yeah, for kids programming, I I mean I I wouldn't get rid of Disney Plus anyways because all of everything that I watch yeah, is on there. Marvel but and Star Wars, yeah. Like like you said, Netflix. I mean, uh, How to Train Your Dragon is on there, or uh, yeah. Dragon Rescue Riders. He's just gonna continually watch yeah. that. So all right, we'll keep that one. Yeah, exactly. Even Amazon Any, Prime, anything, I don't use that right. often, but like he watches Stinky and Dirty, and he watches Tumbleleaf, mm-hmm. and he watches like all these other great kid shows that are exclusive to Amazon Prime. So we're not going to get rid of that, you know. Like it's just Th- those are both phenomenal, by the way. <laughs> they are phenomenal shows. Tumbleleaf yeah. is incredible. I yep. love. I wish he liked like he likes Tumbleleaf. I wish he liked it as much as I do. <laughs> oh yeah, watch yeah. All the time. They um, yeah they need an adult version of the Finding Box, and we'd be like golden. Oh man, yeah, the Finding Place. Yeah, Absolutely. just give me give me a day to go hang out and figure out whatever this thing is. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's great. Anyway, uh, yeah, I one report re- referred to what Warner Brothers is doing to HBO Max as self harm, and I completely agree with that. And I don't, um, I don't have a lot of hope for the future of HBO Max or Warner Brothers. To be honest with you, right now everything's so up in the air. Like. I'm excited for the stuff they have coming out, but anything that they haven't announced yet, like, I don't know what it's going to be. I'm nervous. I'm nervous as hell. And when is it 2023 or four, when they finally going to merge discovery plus and HBO max, like I'm not happy, but I'm not yeah. excited about that. I'm very nervous about what that's going to look like. And, and you know, like. you know, that'll change by then. So I hope it, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, everyone, every, like, I'm not the first one to say this, but like HBO max is one of the high, like highest rated, streamers and I've, we've probably talked about this already yeah. but like they're talking about merging it and changing it and w- why man why <laughs> like everyone love you have a thing that everybody loves everyone thinks this is great you're deleting yep. stuff from it and you're going to change how it works well you're an idiot i mean since since they're tanking the rest of the brand why don't we shift to talking about uh something from the warner back catalog that is uh, actually pretty solid that i neil gaiman responded to a fan on twitter today uh, a fan was saying um i'm something about like i used to wish that this was on hbo but at netflix did such a great job with it that i'm so glad that it's on netflix and neil gaiman said hbo max didn't even bid on this show wow like they didn't even want the sandman which has been the number one show in a bunch of countries over the last few weeks um it's Crazy. doing incredibly well so well that this past friday just a couple days ago netflix dropped a bonus episode an 11th episode of sandman it was teased by neil gaiman thursday night late saying don't you wish there was more than 10 episodes of uh sandman on netflix you know like a tweet and people flipped yeah. out and then at the stroke of midnight on friday morning we got Another episode. Uh, it's two stories in one episode. A dream of a thousand cats, which I was very excited about, and a story called Calliope, which I I've only watched the dream of a thousand cats section. I haven't finished this episode yet. Have you seen it? Yeah, I haven't seen any of it. Uh, okay. When you when you texted me, it was like the the cycle post that has been very. Um, uh, we'll go with esoteric as to okay. what I've been doing. So um, yeah, I haven't gotten around to it, but like. The fact that they, you know, filmed more stuff and like were confident enough to film these other two things and are just like, oh yeah, here's another little carrot on the end. That's my big question, and may I haven't researched it, so maybe someone's talked about it, Neil Gaiman or someone at Netflix. Maybe someone said something, but why would you make an entire other episode of a show and just not 
release it? Like, was the plan to always make it a bonus episode? But, like, what if the show came out and nobody liked it? Would they have still released the bonus episode? Were they just going to sit on this in case people liked it? Like, why would you film a whole thing and not put it out? I, or maybe, again, maybe this is Netflix trying to, like, uh, you know, rebel against their own uh, binging uh, strategy, like what they did with Stranger Things. Like, oh, we're going to release seasons in two halves. That's what they do now to, like, yeah. keep the conversation going, you know. This is probably the way, this is probably a way for them to do that. Where, because these two stories are disconnected from, they're kind of isolated stories. They don't have anything to do with the Corinthian or... Um, you know, the dream vortex or him finding his ruby in his helm and the sand and all that stuff. So I don't really know where it would have fit in that first 10 episodes. So it does right. really work well as a bonus episode to have these two stories. Um, so I guess maybe that was the idea all along. Dream of a Thousand Cats is very good. It's animated, which is neat because uh, otherwise it would just been a bunch of CGI cats. Right. Um, all the ca- I mean, I'm not going to spoil anything about the the, I mean, you've listened to it, at least you've listened to the Audible yeah. version of it, but um, every character besides the owners of the of the main cat, every character in that story is a cat. <laughs> and it's including a cat version of Morpheus. So uh, it just gets weird. And, now, and, but it's a, now it's the a real little, thing was was that uh, the, the other nice Easter egg from that was that um, James McAvoy, who was Morpheus in the audio drama, was yeah. one of the uh, was one of the cats in the episode. He was actually not a cat. Oh, was, I was he? Wrong. I was. He was member. Try, I don't want to give anything away for people who haven't seen it. Okay. He is the human that uh, gives a speech to all the other humans in the past yep, of a I way gotcha. to change their future. Okay, I'll say that. Yep. Um, and also, David Tennant is. The oh voice. yeah. Uh, he's huh. the owner of the main cat and I believe, I believe his wife also plays his character's wife in nice. there as well yeah or someone else with the last name tenant i guess i'm assuming it's his wife i shouldn't assume that but so i did then, uh, uh, i did also see that it was apparently it was producer david goyer's suggestion that they uh pitched it as um pitched it as 11 episodes and that they were going to release 10 and then the extra so this really? was planned okay. from the beginning yeah wow by the way that's something we haven't talked about that david goyer is a producer on the show. David Goyer has written a bunch of superhero stuff. He like co-wrote uh, Batman Begins and like The Dark Knight and stuff. Like he is entrenched in comic book stuff. And I was shocked when I saw his name at the at the end credits of the first episode of Sandman. And I just forgot to mention it. But like you know, there's some good minds besides Neil Gaiman bringing this uh, series to life. And I'm very excited to watch Calliope. That's a cool kind of a one shot story. Um, that has ramifications for the future of uh, Sandman. Should we get a future? Um, and I'm still hoping that we do. It's been very successful. It's been widely praised. And, you know, like we said earlier, it's the number one show in many, many uh, countries, I believe. But I did also see a tweet from Neil Gaiman recently where someone said, how can you not, how can you not already be announcing a season two? Like everyone loves right. this show. And he said, well, Sandman, it's a very expensive show. So yeah. for Netflix to like release that amount of money for us to make a season two, it has to be, they have to be sure. And even though we are, yes, right now we're number one in 26 countries or whatever, but that honestly may not be enough. And it's just going to be up to time to figure out whether it's enough. So Which is mildly crazy. Uh, yeah. Other other side note, David Goyer is 100% the cross between Dave Filoni and Stanley Tucci. If you look at a picture, if you look at a picture of him, he's a hundred percent. Because I was sitting there, I, I've always thought there was the Tucci connection, and then I pulled up a different photo, and I was like, oh, there's a lot of Filoni there too. (laughs) A lot of Filoni. Yeah. All right. Uh, So cool. Yeah. Go check out. um, You know, if you want to hear us talk about the first uh, two uh, halves of the Sandman season, we did a, a recap of the first five, and then we did a recap of the final five so you can go check those out in your feed as well um and then go watch episode 11 that is out currently absolutely Um, speaking of episodes that are being released we got word that amazon prime officially has announced a two-day and two-episode premiere of lord of the rings the rings of power 
Episode one is now going to drop a day earlier than expected on September 1st. And episode two will be coming out the following day on September 2nd. September 2nd was the initial release date. Now we're getting two episodes back to back on two days. Um, up from there, the other episodes are going to come out weekly until I think October 14th, I believe. Yep. Is the yeah, that'll be the final. So that'll take us a little, a little over a month to get through everything. That's um, an interesting take on it. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes, you know. Uh, we've seen the two episodes or three episodes in a day uh, to spread it over yeah. two days. Uh, you know, maybe get the get the hype up a little and then get people to tune in and watch both of them on the debut day or whatever. So my guess is that, excuse me, my guess is that episode one probably will end with some kind of cliffhanger that yep. will make people want to immediately tune into the following day. But then is it going to be, I feel like you run, having them not be in the same day, you run the risk of people not realizing like they have to, they're going to have to be like at the beginning and the end of episode one, like tune in tomorrow, come back tomorrow for episode yeah. two. Otherwise, people might, might might wait a whole week and not realize it's the next day. And then even then, they're like, okay, well, is episode three, is it on the Sunday or is it on Monday or whenever it comes out? Like, I don't know what day, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it might be a little confusing, but I also enjoy that I can get to watch two episodes in two days. Or I can wait till the second day and just watch two in a row. Right. <laughs> you know, that's cool. So. All, um, and, and September 2nd was supposed to be the release day. So they're they're actually pushing right. this ahead of day. Yeah. Is September 2nd, do we know what day that is? Is that a Sunday? Uh, it's a Friday. Oh, it's a Friday. Oh, okay. Yep. Because the only reason I know that is because I was supposed to be out of work or out of town. Yeah, supposed to be out of work. Um, <laughs> supposed to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be out of town for work that day, and it got pushed back a day before, so I will be back in time to watch. Although, if I was out of town for work, I could definitely watch it because I have nothing else to do when I'm in a, sitting in a hotel room. Mm-hmm. So... Um, there you go. It'll it'll be nicer to watch on the big screen with the surround sound rather yeah. than um, sitting at a little tiny whatever they have in the hotel. So yeah, for sure. Um, well, yeah, I, I don't think we've seen any more like footage or anything, but I'm still pumped for the show. Um, Absolutely. I'm interested to see like you know tomorrow. I'm interested to see like other reactions. We just did our House of the Dragon reaction, but I'm interested to see if people really liked it. Um, and then kind of gear up for like what kind of competition it's going to be for lord of the rings because like going into house of the dragon i was like okay well i think lord of the rings kind of got this in the bag i think more people are excited for lord of the rings than house of the dragon but yeah for some of the house house of the dragon was pretty solid first episode so absolutely we'll we'll see who comes back for what not that you can't watch both obviously but well talking about coming back i think we have uh a big yeah, DC of, return. <laughs> King of Segways, my friend. Mark Silvestri returning to DC Comics with a new miniseries called Batman and the Joker, Deadly Duo. Mark Silvestri is the one of the founders of Image Comics. Uh, he's known for, he's worked with both, uh, obviously, Image, but also DC and Marvel. He's worked on Batman. He's worked on House of Mystery for DC. He's also done runs on Incredible Hulk and just a bunch of X-Men titles. Wolverine, X-Force, X-Men. Um, he's done art. He's an artist and a writer. Um, this uh, new mini Batman Joker deadly duo. Uh, the synopsis is Batman and the Joker are forced to team up to save some people close to them who've been kidnapped, I believe. Uh, this is a Harley and the Joker story, and Harley gets kidnapped, and Joker is mad about that and wants to get her back. And while also Commissioner Gordon is kidnapped at the same time, so Batman's trying to find him. And I guess they have to team up for some reason, and uh, the the synopsis that I read ended with the classic line of what they discover will quote shake Gotham city and the bat family to their core. Cause I that's like never happened that. before. I feel like I've read that <laughs> sentence so many times in the description of so many comic books. Like you got to find a better way oh, yeah. to end your descriptions, man. Like so many things have shaken Gotham city to its core that I am. I am unfazed by that description. <laughs> I gotta say at this point, uh, like really, really to its core and for how long for like two this is a mini series right. so it's not necessarily main continuity i don't know it's gonna really do this much yeah you're gonna shake things um, to their core into up or two issues yeah good work yeah sure uh 
Uh, I put this on the rundown because Mark Silvestri is like a big name in comics and it's cool. He's doing a Batman Joker thing, but I honestly, I don't care about this <laughs> at all. I'm a little, to be honest, I'm a little jokered out. Um, honestly, I really, ever since, probably ever since the dark Knight, Joker's just been like in everyone's face in every comic. He's got it. He had a solo series this past year, for God's sake, that James Tinian wrote. I'm sure I've heard it's very good. Um, there were three of him at one point in uh, the DC miniseries by, from Jeff Johns. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of Joker out there. He's in every movie. <laughs> it's just like Joker, 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 Joker's like, I don't care anymore. Yeah. I've read so many great Joker stuff that I get it. And especially like teaming up with Batman, like that's that's tricky. I hope that he does the work necessary to get to have it make sense that the two of them are teaming up because... It doesn't happen often, and it's tough to make that make sense. So, I don't know. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like it's got the, the best foundation on it, but whatever. Sylvester might be able to pull it together. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Uh, or somebody will. I don't know if I'm going to read it. <laughs> but it's some news, <laughs> nonetheless. Sorry for you big Mark Sylvester fans that are uh, uh, yelling at your podcasting app right now that I'm talking shit about this new announcement, but... That's uh, just how I feel. Anyway, sorry, not sorry. Uh, this week in your local comic book store, we got Action Comics 1046, Amazing Spider-Man number 8, Batman White Knight Red Hood number 2, Carnage number 5, Deadly Class number 55, Detective Comics uh, 1063, End After End number 1, Gun Honey Blood for Blood number 1, Harley Quinn number 21, Miles Morales Spider-Man number 41, my Little Pony, number four. Thrown in My Little Pony this week because there's something for everyone at your local comic book store. Making sure people out there are aware of that. Robin, number 17. Star Wars, Darth Vader, number 26. And Swamp Thing, number 16, I believe. This is the end of uh, Ram V's epic, wonderful Swamp Thing run. And uh, I am dying to check that out because I haven't yet. I'm kind of waiting for a trade of the whole thing. So hopefully that's coming up. Steve, is there anything that you're excited about coming out? Anything that you're reading currently? Uh, nothing that jumped at me on that list, but uh, yeah, I'm still still plugging away through that. Uh, um, yeah, I wanted to say Robin because I was literally looking at Robin number seventeen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, that Robin trade, the, the night, yeah, the the Nightwing trade, and then uh, I'm actually going to dive into the. Uh, I have that collected Sandman that I'm probably going to crack. Uh, well, I'm catching up on the, you know, the stuff from the pull list. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm uh, constantly trying to catch up on the stuff from my pull list. I just keep falling behind on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard. Like a couple, like a week or so ago, I took a night and I started reorganizing my short boxes, my comics, and how they're like stored. Because uh, avid listeners may remember, a little over a year ago, my basement flooded and I lost some of my uh, comic books. And I had to just get everything out of my basement, including all of my boxes and comics ended up all over the place out of the boxes. And then once they were dried out or determined to be OK, I just like shoved them back in and I hadn't reorganized them. So I took some time, started reorganizing. I got pretty far, not too far. I'm still in the middle of it. I haven't had time to come back to it yet. And I'm just all this to say it's really unfair for comic books to keep coming out while I'm trying to organize my <laughs> current ones. Like, it's just like, can anyone just, just stop publishing books for like a week so I can finish this and then I can start incorporating? Cause I was like, okay, well, this is this, this short box that I have has a bat signal on the outside of it. So this should be all my Batman stuff or most of my Batman stuff. But Oh, oh now there's been two more issues since I've done that. So now I need to find, do they fit in there too? Or Nightwing? Right. Does that count as Batman? What is, what's going on? You know, so. Right the whole thing my storage is insane so anyway um if you could all just stop publishing comic books until i'm done that'd be great thank you uh for any nasty grams to that comment contact carol's kid on twitter yeah <laughs> if you don't know that's a joke you're dumb uh moving on into some one shots to end out this episode we got a couple for you here first of all uh jordan elas i think that's how you say his last name is leaving the cast of Superman and Lois. Uh, Elas plays one of the Kent's teenage sons, Jonathan Kent, and is one of the main characters of the show and uh, just didn't show up for season three. 
and uh, shortly after and informed the people that he wasn't not going to be returning in the role. A statement from Warner Brothers Television said, Jordan Elas has notified the studio he will not be returning to Superman and Lois for season three due to personal reasons. The role of Jonathan Kent will be recast. Well, and I think that's smart play because he's there, there's four main characters on that show and they are the family of Clark and uh, Lois and Jonathan and Jordan. Um, and it's a bummer when a main character has to be recast in a show that's already had two seasons. Like, that's a bummer. You have to get used to a new actor. Um, what is this, Doctor Who? Right. But, um, you know, I think it's a smart role. Like, there's the way the show is, there's no way that you could write him out of the show. Like, it's based mm. on the four of them. So there's no way you could write it out. But um, whatever his personal reasons are, I hope uh, he's, hope he's okay. But we'll not be seeing him in Superman Lois Season 3. No, but someone will be seeing in print more so than the, uh, I guess, not live action, but animated motion capture action that we yeah. have seen him in. Mm. Indeed. Maybe maybe something coming up here in a, a couple months or so. But I wouldn't be um, uh, Lucasfilm has officially announced a new Cal Kestis novel. For anyone who doesn't know, Cal Kestis is the main character in the acclaimed Jedi Fallen Order video game, played by Cameron Monaghan. Uh, Lucasfilm has recently announced that the sequel to the game, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, will be released in 2023, and I am hotly awaiting that. Uh, oh, yeah. So the new novel, Star Wars Jedi Battle Scars, will take place between the two games, uh, and it will be written by Sam Maggs. Um, as our resident Star Wars book nerd, um, I will be reading this, because, okay. again, much like Last of Us, that story in uh, Jedi Fallen Order, they could have taken the the cutscenes from that and go on yeah. YouTube if you haven't played the game and don't plan on it, and just get a good Star Wars story from watching the cutscenes. Yeah, a really good Star Wars story that feeds directly into the movies. Yeah, in a, a number of ways. Um, Cal- or Cal- even into through. Kenobi. Yeah, and also the sequel series because of what happens yeah. to Ilum. Yep. That planet. Um, uh, so anyway, um, Cal Kestis is a survivor of Order 66 and um, is kind of like... So it takes place between... The Fallen Order takes place between the prequels and the original trilogy, correct? You, right? you can't say that with a clone so close to me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, played by Cameron Monaghan, who played um, the Joker on Gotham. Yep. Um, speaking of the Joker. And not only like performed by vocally, but also the characters made to look like him. Oh yeah. It, it looks exactly, like exactly him. like him in a way that made, as soon as I played fallen order, I was like, we're going to see this guy in live action. Like they are, they hired a talented actor and they made the character look exactly like him. Maybe, I don't know if they had plans, but I think they knew enough. They're like, we should make this guy look like the actor. Yeah. Just in case. Just in case we want to move forward with this guy in the future. And I don't know. There's a second game. Plus, there's a novel. I would not be surprised if we see Cameron Monaghan as Cal Kestis pop up in something, whether it's a film or Andor or whatever. Who knows? Maybe we'll hear something at D23 next month. Oh, yeah. Apparently, he was in Shameless, too, for anybody who didn't see him in Gotham. That's right. That's right. Um Rounding out our one shots is something that uh, eh, it's kind of a bummer for me, but I also totally get it. In 2018, I believe it was at Comic Con, we got uh, an announcement that they were working on a reboot or sequel series to Buffy the Vampire Slayer, one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, that Buffy reboot, sequel, whatever you want to call it, is officially now on hold. It was originally. Announced with writer and showrunner Monica Owusu Breen, and uh, she's going to introduce a new Slayer, and it was going to be within the same continuity as the original TV series. And if that continued to be the case, that opened up a bunch of, uh, you know, possibilities for cameos and stuff. But uh, apparently, it is on hold. They didn't really say why it's on hold, but I don't know. I feel like part of the reason's got to be that the creator of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Joss Whedon is now widely known to be a complete asshole. So um, I don't know if you really want anything with his name on it out there right now. Um, 
I'm sure he there's a way he could have been like kicked off as a producer or something, but I feel like you still got to have that created by Joss Whedon uh, mm. thing on there. So I don't know. I don't know why they don't. I mean, this is just me fan casting, but like this would, you know, you're, you're, you're introducing a new Slayer. Great. I'm sure that would have been cool. But why isn't the play just like make bring back Sarah Michelle Geller as like an older Buffy Maybe she's too old to be a Slayer, but she's got a kid, and her kid's a Slayer. Bam. Right. There's your show. Simple. Easy. There's your show. You get cameos from Allison Hannigan and whatever. I mean, you probably couldn't get cameos from Angel and Spike since they're supposed to be immortal vampires that don't age, and those actors have clearly aged because they're human beings, so you probably have to do some digital stuff or not have them in the show. Maybe they got dusted years ago who knows i don't know but it seems pretty obvious to just get sarah michelle geller to be the matron mother figure to the new main slayer how is that hard i just looked up david boreanis he's definitely aged he's definitely aged right he is not an immortal vampire i'm sure he still looks great and you know the guy uh, that played spike whose name is escaping me he was all he was one of the dads in um runaways oh okay Um, yeah the, I, the, well, that's why I went with Boreanis because that's the name I remembered. <laughs> I it's killing me that I can't remember James Marsters. Uh, oh, okay. Is Spike's name is um, yeah, and yeah, like that makes sense that you know they could write some crazy thing and it's like oh we became human, whatever. But I don't really want that. I want to be vampire. Oh, he's yeah, he's aged a lot. He definitely yeah. aged. They're, he was old. They're he all was old. old when he shot the show. I think right. he was like older than he was playing. I think when they shot the series. So yeah, I mean he's sixty now. So yeah, exactly. So I don't oh. know. David Boreanaz is from hold. Buffalo. How did I not know is that? He really? Yeah. Wow. Learn something new every day. Congratulations! Congratulations, Buffalo. Um, Ithaca College yeah, so, alumni. Oh, congratulations, David Boreanaz. All sorts that. of Central New York Good. ties. <laughs> So it's on hold. It's a bummer, but I completely understand why. I would love some kind of extension of the Buffy verse um, that wasn't comic book related, the live action version. But you know, whatever. We're not going to get it. I'm happy with the series as it is. So that's all I got. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, uh, real quick, I'll say that I saw the movie Nope, the new uh, Jordan Peele yeah. horror movie, and I absolutely loved it. Thought nice, it was great. So I highly recommend uh, going to see Nope. It's like a horror movie, but it's got some Spielberg vibes at the same time. Really cool, like inventive stuff you don't really expect. Scary, fun, tension. That was great. Nice. Loved it. Other than that, I got nothing else. Steve, it's almost midnight. You got anything else? No, we're, uh, we're, yeah, we're right on the cusp of midnight. So uh, before that hits... I would say you guys should, uh, you know, like, subscribe, follow, uh, check us out, themultiversesupport.com, multiversesupport yeah. on all your socials, uh, do the whole thing, leave us a review, we'll appreciate it, because, well, we appreciate it, and uh, yeah, anything else? Uh, that's all I got, so until next time, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the multiverse. Okay.